What's going on, everybody? I hope you guys are all having a great day. You guys know I don't really make too many videos unless I've got something valid to talk about, and I think this needs to be addressed. So we're talking about phase six. I know it's kind of picking up some traction. I'm happy about that. I wanted to kind of give you guys a, a, an elementary level of what we're looking at and why I'm excited, and we'll kind of go from there. So to answer the first question, when is this supposed to be implemented? We are looking at a September 1st, 2022 effective date. Um, right but the problem is is uh not the problem a lot of people are saying wasn't won't this be pushed back won't this be pushed back it's already been pushed back covid extended the this another year so this is the september 1st 2022 is the pushed back date so i wanted to clear that first and um we'll just kind of get into this so why am i excited about phase six and what is it so we'll just kind of jump into it. As of September 1st, 2022, regulatory initial margin, IM requirements, will apply for the first time to hundreds of global counterparties that belong to a consolidated group for which the average aggregate notional amount, which is AANA, of derivatives transactions exceeds $8 billion or a similar amount in local currency. So let's look at that again. So hundreds of global counterparties, so a hundred of financial institutions, um, are going to basically be exposed to margin requirement rules if they are doing over 8 billion in derivative transactions, right? Which is a lot of them, okay? And so let's move on. The compliance state is commonly referred to as phase six since it's the sixth global compliance state for the phase in of regulatory IM requirements since September 1st, 2016, okay? So let's jump over. I want to show you guys something. So G20. OK, they're basically what G20 is, is, is a group of 20 intergovernmental forum compromising 19 countries and the European Union. It works to address major issues related to the global economy, such as international financial stability, climate change mitigation and sustainable development. OK, so they're like. They are the big guys that are kind of controlling the world's economy, their oversight goes worldwide. OK, so this is an article where they're kind of gave their insight after the 2008 collapse. And one of the things that they're pushing for is, again, margin requirements on non-centrally clear derivatives, which is what we're talking about with phase six. So they have two main benefits, what they say. It's reduction of systemic risk, which only standardized derivatives are suitable for central clearing. A substantial fraction of derivatives are not standardized and cannot be centrally cleared. These non-centrally cleared derivatives, totaling hundreds of trillions of dollars in notional amounts, pose the same type of systemic contagion and spillover risk that materialized in recent financial crisis, aka 2008. Margin requirements for non-centrally cleared derivatives would be expected to reduce contagion and spillover effects by ensuring that collateral is available to offset losses caused by the default of a derivative counterparty. Margin requirements can also have a broader macro prudential benefits by reducing the financial system's vulnerability to potentially destabilizing pro cyclicality and limiting the buildup of uncollateralized exposures within the financial system. Okay. And the second benefit is a promotion of central clearing. So in many jurisdictions, central clearing will be mandatory for most standardized derivatives, but clearing imposes costs in part because CCPs require margin to be posted, margin requirements on non-centrally cleared derivatives by reflecting the generally higher risk associated with these derivatives will promote central clearing, making the G20's original 2009 reform program more effective. This could in turn contribute the reduction, the reduction of systemic risks. OK. And um, now, so we understand that, and that's basically what they're talking about, that, hey, non clear derivatives is a huge trillion, trillion, trillion dollar market, and it's not being margin in collateral is not being posted. So that's where we're at. So let's get back to phase six is the estimates that more than 775 counterparties within excess of 5,400 relationships may become subject to regulatory initial margin requirements in phase six. More than 800 of those relationships may need to exchange initial margin in the near term following September 1st, and therefore should be actively preparing for this stage. So they're going to be having to, a lot of these firms that are not preparing for this are going to have to pose, are going to have to come up with some collateral, right? And that collateral is going to be based off of a calculation that is a 
A-N-A, -A, which is a basically, let's go ahead and look that up. Let me show you guys. Okay, so you're taking the sums total outstanding amount of non-clear derivative positions during the prescribed authorization period on a gross national basis, but they're doing this across everyone. So it's not like they're just looking at your Anna specifically, they're doing it across all the members that are participating right in these it are in ISDA and they're going to take that value and say, Hey, this is going to be the margin that people are going to have to post. So you've got people that it might be smaller firms. They're going to have to post massive amounts of collateral. And I just want to give you guys, if we come over to my Twitter, I'll show you guys something I posted here. We can look at what the phases have looked like so far. So phase one, two, three, four, five, and six, six is the one highlighted in yellow. Anna, or A A N A, I shouldn't say I could call it Anna, but in phase one was three tr trillion dollars. So meaning that if your firm was doing over three trillion dollars in basically, you know, non-clear derivative, uh, you know, trades, that you are going to be in scope of these initial margin requirements. Well, not a lot of these smaller firms are going to hit this $3 trillion threshold, even the 1.5 trillion. Okay. So you can see it kind of goes down, 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 but look at phase six. No longer are we in the trillions. We're at 8 billion. So if you're doing over 8 billion, you are going to be susceptible to these margin requirements. Okay. And so we go on and it says preparation for regulatory initial margin is complex and resource intense involving the bilateral negotiation of new initial margin margin uh, documents, the establishment of custodial accounts and operational pre preparation for collateral management processes. So they have to do a, a, a lot of different things. So including margin calculation, margin call communication, allocation and affirmation, collateral settlement and reporting. So there's a lot of things. It is imperative that a group of counterparties that anticipates it will exceed the AANA threshold for phase six and is likely to exceed the initial margin threshold of 50 million or in similar currency notifies its counterparties and begins preparation. Okay. So basically, let me break it down. Phase six, September 1st, people that are doing over 8 billion in non-clear derivative transactions are going to get hit with some crazy margin requirements that they're going to have to post some major collateral. And in my opinion, some of them are not going to have it. It's basically what happened to Arkegos, right? It's the same thing. If phase six existed when all that was happening, it would have never happened. Okay. So we can move on now. Um, I just wanted to highlight right here. It says firms across phase five and six need to act now and accelerate their efforts to make sure certain capabilities are in place on time. Failing to act now will put the firm's ability to transact in OTC bilateral derivatives at significant risk. This is not the time to slow down, but an opportunity to reassess and make sure you meet your long-term needs. Okay, so some of these guys that fail this, they get margin called and it implodes their business. But there's another thing called DNT, which is a do not trade list. So none of these counterparties, if you get if you get fucked on this phase six and you get hit with a DNT, you are not going to, none of these counterparties are going to trade with you. It's like a, a death sentence. Okay. So it's really interesting to think that some of these guys are not taking this super seriously because it certainly is something to be taken, not lightly. Right. And I know a lot of people are going to ask you about Hester Pierce and, and what happens with her. If she says, no, this has nothing to do with the SEC. She has no say in this at all. This is the world banks. Okay. And if we're talking about what happened with Archegos and how he was not posting margin for any of these derivative positions that he was taking, none of that exists either. And how many of these people do you think are caught right now with their pants down and are delaying this because they know they are not going to be able to meet these margin requirements? They went way across the board. They're way overexposed. A lot of these smaller firms, I think, are going to get crumbled by this, right? Now let's move on. ISDA estimates 775 entities, we talked about this, will come into the margin requirement scope for the first time with phase six, more than double the number in phase five, a, transi uh, a transition that put pressure on institutions to achieve compliance within the framework in, sp in spite of phase five being delayed for a year. So what they're saying is it was already an issue for these guys to get in line with phase five and it was delayed a year for them and they gave them more time. Right. So is this kind of they're at the point where they're tired of they're not giving these guys no more time. And it says they noted it 
in his remarks that many firms coming into scope for the first time in 2021 were unable to achieve compliance with all their training partners in time and had to focus their training on fewer counterparties. Again, what happens is it start, the room starts shrinking around you. Eventually, you have no counterparties to trade with at all. And what's going to happen is this is when it was still at 50 billion. Okay. So now that the threshold is 8 billion, this is going to affect a crap ton of smaller guys and it'll be like a, a domino effect. And they go on to say it's by no means certain that phase six will run as smoothly because the challenges faced during phase five will be exponentially greater this time around. The estimated 775 entities translate into roughly 5,400 counterparty relationships putting a huge strain on the ability of firms to complete document negotiation and custodian onboarding processes in time. The entities caught by phase six also have fewer resources available to them than bigger institutions captured by earlier phases, as well as a less extensive automation of margin processes, which means these smaller guys again are going to get toppled over. And just to give you guys an idea, like Archegos, they're a small fish in comparison to some of the big whales, right? And that was still a big, big deal. Adding complication uh, to the next phase is that the pension funds and investors often have their derivative portfolios managed by different asset managers through managed accounts, meaning preparations are relying on each entity calculating its swaps exposure across all separately managed accounts and disclosing it to asset managers if it expects to breach the threshold for compliance. So these guys are running around like little ants trying to figure this out right now. And... Um, I don't think a lot of these guys are going to get it done. And if that happens and they're, or if it, they calculate it and they realize that they're way in scope and they need to post a lot of collateral, what happens if they don't have it? I mean, that's when the music stops, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let's see, we'll move on. This is just an article about preparing for phase six from law firms that, that kind of help assist some people that maybe are not um, in line. And... <clears throat> It says right here, the requirement to exchange initial margin, for example, assets posted to a counterparty to cover potential future exposure. And I want to highlight potential future exposure because that's why these guys are posting margin. So a lot of these guys take risky ass derivative positions, right? That are risky as fuck, right? And they're just basically gambling. They're going to have to post collateral on this on this stuff now. And what if that number is so astronomically high? They can't. Again, this is really, and I'm not trying to say that September 1st, everything's going to happen. It's going to take a, 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 some time for all for these dominoes to start falling. But, I mean, this is the most exciting thing that I've seen thus far. Um, it says right here, most financial end users are unaccustomed to exchanging initial margin because they haven't had to do it before. Again, Bill Wang from Archegos didn't have to post any initial margin, right? That's why he was able to get into the mess that he was able to get into because he was going from bank to bank to bank to bank and, and basically saying, hey, it, I'm thinking at first he was posting the same collateral. He's showing his books and saying he's got it, but he's not actually having to post anything, all right? And so a lot of these guys are going to have major issues with this. And so we come down, this is an interesting part. Initial margin must be segregated with an unaffiliated third party. So you're not going to be doing this with your buddies and cannot be rehypothecated. So this third party that's collecting and managing your collateral that you're posting, if you are managed, able to meet these collateral requirements that you're now are going to have to have under phase six, um, they're not going to be able to go and use that money either. Right. So it doesn't help the it doesn't it's not like circular. They're not going to be able to make that money and make and use it and make themselves cash, which is a big deal. That's how we the 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 mess gets larger and larger. So it's really interesting to see that all of these things are kind of falling into place right now, especially with some of Adam Aaron's news about how he's going to pants. You know, that's in August. And then we're seeing, you know, phase six to come through September 1st, you know, this is really, really uh, juicy stuff, right? Another thing that I want to bring up about phase six, um, they had, uh, Archegos had derivative positions more than 50 billion, okay? And they were not required by US regulators to post any margin when it first initiated a trade. So what's interesting about this, US regulators have no fucking, I mean, they do have a say in this, like they're going to be the ones that are regulating it, but these are the ones that are not making the rules. They're going to be told that they need to regulate this stuff. So I hope that that kind of gives you guys a breakdown of what phase six is, why it's important. I tried to really simplify it because it is much larger and 
if there's enough interest, we'll start diving into some of the more deeper things. But uh, September 1st is the date that it is supposed to be um, in effect. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed about that. And um, I will catch you guys on the flip side. Love you a long time. Peace.